What's good, brothers and sisters? Chris here from Namaste Gaming, and today I've got the much-anticipated Guardian Leveling Guide ready to rock for you beautiful people. In this guide, we're going to go over the trait setup, weapon sets, and stat choices that I believe are best for getting your Guardian to 80 with as little hassle as possible. Because of the way traits and gear work, the guide is pretty much going to divide into three parts, one for the early game that lasts until your first trait respec at 40, one to handle the mid game from 40 to 60, and of course in the last part we'll cover 60 to 80. The one thing that doesn't change is my weapon recommendations. You'll want to use some combination of hammer, greatsword, and sword torch. Greatsword and Sword Torch offer the best DPS by a decent margin, whereas Hammer offers some incredible survivability with near constant protection, an immobilize, a knockback, and ring of warding. It's good to keep the other weapons around because of the versatility they offer. Mace and Shield will let you face tank nearly anything in the game. Scepter and Focus will let you handle packs from a distance and work great for tagging mobs in dynamic events. Staff is great for support and traveling long distances since Guardians don't have a ton of mobility. There are really no wrong choices for weapons with this class, but my personal number one choice is the Hammer, with either Greatsword, Staff, or Scepter Focus as my swap depending on the situation. For utilities, you've got a couple of choices. You can go with shouts for constant uptime on boons like protection and retaliation, as well as getting access to regeneration, swiftness, and on-demand aegis. The other option, and my personal preference for soloing, is to use meditations. Smite Condition gives you some extra AoE damage and condition removal on a short cooldown. Judge's Intervention is a great gap closer, and AoE burning is no joke. Plus, it gives you a stun break. For my third utility, I like to use Retreat in the early game and swap it out to Contemplation of Purity post 60. For healing, you can use whatever you want. Signet is great for condition removal and is what I personally prefer. For elite skills, Renewed Focus fits into the build nicely, but if you prefer something else, don't let me stop you. So, let's talk traits. 11 to 40 will be your weakest levels in the game, so if you can slog through those, you're golden. To help you do that, I'd suggest going with the trait setup on the screen right now, starting with 5 points in Honor to pick up Vigorous Precision. If you dedicate your jewelry slots and upgrades to Precision, you should be able to have about 75% uptime on Vigor, which is huge. Vigor is the best defensive boon in the game if you learn how to dodge properly, and having it on the same class that gets Aegis and passive regen is pretty awesome. Once you've got that, you can pick up the rest of the traits in any order you prefer. Plus, you've got 5 to spend wherever. It doesn't matter, because at level 40, you're entering a new chapter of your life. At level 40, you want to respect to this build. 20 in honor to pick up Selfless Daring, which heals at the end of your dodge roll, and Two-Handed Mastery, which makes your two-handed weapon skills recharge 20% faster, and 10 in Valor to get Meditation Mastery, which makes Meditation abilities recharge 20% faster as well. Selfless Daring combines ridiculously well with Vigorous Precision, so you should have a pretty hard time dying once you have this combo. Two-Handed Mastery is going to give you more DPS, more control, and more boon uptime. If you're using one-handed weapons, Empowering Might is a decent replacement. It's really good to use two-handers with this build, though. Finally, 20% more Meditation gives us even better condition removal and damage. From that foundation, we're going to go straight for another 10 points into Valor to pick up Purity. At this part of the game, we start seeing a lot more conditions popping up, so Purity is going to give us some bonus condition removal to help us handle that. From 50 to 60, you're free to spend points wherever. Virtues and Radiance both have their benefits, but neither are really game changers with only 10 points. For gear, you'll want strong gear in most slots, which is power and precision. You can grab a couple of pieces of hardy gear if you don't like how low your health dips when you stop dodging, though. At 60, it's time to spread your wings. Guardians get stupidly good once the Grandmaster traits open up, and we're going to take advantage of that from the start by switching to this spec. Monk's Focus will make you borderline immortal. 
between vigor, dodge heals, meditations, boons, and the fact that you can gear mostly offensively at this point, so your kill speed should be great too, 60 to 80 is nothing with this build. The final build we're working towards is this. Nearly permanent retaliation uptime, constant self-healing, big symbols that last a long time so that we can use blast and whirl finishers to self-combo for more retaliation and condition removal, and very respectable DPS to boot. For gear, mix knights and berserkers to your preference. I like to keep a decent amount of knights so that if I'm grouping with squishies I can grab the aggro most of the time, but it's really just a question of playstyle. The best part about this build is that it's still totally viable at level 80. In fact, with a couple of trait tweaks, it becomes one of the best endgame guardian builds for doing dungeons and fractals. In Valor, we switch Meditation Mastery out for Retributive Armor, Keep Purity, and swap Monk's Focus for Altruistic Healing. In Honor, we drop Rid of Exaltation to pick up Superior Aria. You can either keep Two-Handed Mastery or double down on support by switching it out for Empowering Might, and trade out Rid of Persistence for Pure Voice. The traits probably gave it away, but this is a Shout build, so you'll want to replace your meditations with whichever shouts you like best. Personally, I tend to stick with Stand Your Ground and Hold the Line. Somebody is usually getting hit, so the extra regen, protection, stability, and retaliation rarely go to waste. Save Yourselves is a great candidate for that third slot, but if you prefer Retreat, then by all means run with it. You can also use this slot to swap in utilities like Wall of Reflection or Hallowed Ground as needed. The premise behind this variation is pretty straightforward. Every time you apply a boon, you get healed. You have symbols and shouts on short cooldown timers that should keep you buffed up, plus your greatsword gives you might on the third hit. Your virtues give you boons when you activate them, and you can equip a staff if you really want to take things over the top with the number 4 skill, Empower, which applies 12 stacks of might to friendlies and finishes it off with a heal of its own. It may as well be a second healing skill as far as this build is concerned. If you do decide to rock altruistic healing at 80, you want knight's gear and berserker's trinkets. People with more time than me have done the math. You can take my word for it or not as you please, but it's pretty cut and dry. As far as runes, that's a little bit more of a gray area. You can rock the 2 water, 2 monk, 2 sanctuary setup for ridiculous boon durations. You can take runes of the soldier for even more condition removal. You can go dolyak and feel like even more of a tank. You can go the opposite direction and improve your DPS with some ruby orbs. Or if you think you might want to switch builds a lot and you have the coin to burn, you could even opt for divinity runes. They're actually not half bad for a guardian. For food, you can go with Omnomberry Pies to improve your survivability even more, or Chocolate Omnomberry Creams for more boon duration, and you will most definitely want the best maintenance oil you can afford as well, since crits are super important to this build, and we're stacking a fair amount of toughness. All in all, this build can be modified to fit pretty much any situation. It's just as powerful at endgame as it is leveling, and it's actually a ton of fun to play. Because of this spec, I now main Guardian instead of Warrior, so be careful if you think you're just going to level up a Guardian alt to play around with. You might just get addicted like I did. Anyway, that wraps up the build guide. If you guys have any questions or feedback, please do leave them in the comments below. This is going to be the new default format for my leveling guide videos, and I will eventually go back and redo the Warrior, Thief, and Ranger guides to bring them up to spec, so now is the time to let me know what you liked and what you didn't before it's too late. If you enjoyed the video, please do me a favor and show it some love with the liking and the favoriting and the social media sharing and all that wonderful stuff. If you're new around here, welcome to the channel. Stick around by hitting that subscribe button. There's more like this on the way. As always, much love to y'all and stay black.